G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab and today I want to talk to you about the difference between power and energy and focusing on a small hybrid inverter here at the Smart Energy Lab. Now, this inverter is on my neighbour's house and we're going to talk a bit about some of its features and some of its limitations and how it affects the way that she can use it. Okay, let's get into it. Wow, check this inverter out. This has been on the wall for about five years now and uh, I think it needs a bit of a clean. <laughs> but dust never hurt anyone. Uh, these are IP65, I think, or 66, which means they can be out in the weather, in the rain, uh, but you don't really want to put them in the sunshine because sun will heat up the inverter and inverters do hard work and that means they've got to cool themselves. And so if you make it even harder for them by putting them in direct sunlight, then they're not going to work so well. And often they'll just power limit. So this is a Goodwee. Uh, this is their, uh, what's the model number is the GW5048EM. It's a five kilowatt hybrid inverter. So it's got solar inputs. Uh, this is the solar coming in here, which is up on the roof. It's got grid input from the microgrid and it's got a backup circuit as well. So you might think five kilowatts, whoa, that's great, that's plenty. But actually, if you look at the data sheet, so in backup mode, this unit drops down to what it says here, 2300 VA. Now, VA, volt amps, it's kind of the way you calculate power, but you include power factor. That's another whole story, including um, how much froth is on top of a glass of beer, but we'll cover that one later. Um, effectively, maybe about 2000 watts of power is the maximum that this can deliver when the microgrid's not available, or if you happen to be on the utility grid. So it's something to be aware of. Anyway, let me finish giving it a clean. Oh, hi, Glenn. Oh, hi, Shiny. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you, can I use my hairdryer on this solar power system? Yeah, no, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but we need to check how much power it uses. So I brought my power meter with me and we can just plug it in and check it out and see if this little inverter can run it even when there is no grid available, just running off these batteries. Let's check it out. Was that okay, Glenn? Well, Shani, it was drawing 1800 watts. Amazing, this little hairdryer. And this inverter uh, can supply 5,000 watts when the grid's available, but only about 2,000. So yes, it can do it, but only just. So maybe if the power's out, I wouldn't be using the hairdryer. Wow, okay. So if I run my hairdryer, how long can I run it for before I run my batteries flat? Good question. You just identify the difference between power and energy. Power is this thing using 1,800 watts. Energy is how long can you use 1,800 watts for? Now. Uh, you might think that's a lot of power and surely it's going to run my batteries uh, empty really quickly. But actually, uh, power times time is energy and you're only going to use this for a few minutes. So uh, this battery system here can store 10 kilowatt hours. Uh, you could run this for <laughs> actually for several hours. Uh, I don't think you probably want to dry your hair for that long, but it's not actually a problem to use a hairdryer off this system. It won't even have an impact on your batteries at all. Could we try out this blow heater? Sure, let's check it out. Wow, 2,240 watts. That is uh, just on the limit of this inverter when the grid's not available. So yeah, you could use it with the grid being available, but I'd say when it's in backup, not really. Wait, Glenn, what about this one? Whoa, now that looks like a big heater, uh, but we've got to check what the rating is on top. What's it say on top? It says 2.4 kilowatts. So actually it's about the same rating as the little heater that you had before. Size isn't everything. Wow. But wait, there's one more. <laughs> well, well, that's a compressor and it's a very surgy load. Uh, the problem with compressors is even though it says uh, 1.7 horsepower, which is about 1200 watts, 
when it starts up, it draws five to 10 times that. So it could be like, you know, <laughs> 10,000 watts just on startup, and it definitely won't run off this inverter. So compressors are a problem load. Anything like a water pump, a compressor, and sometimes old type of air conditioners, they are very surgy and unfortunately uh, won't run off this system. Oh, thanks for telling me all that, Glenn. It's really good to know and very interesting. I'm gonna go off and dry my hair now. <laughs>